Howdy, it's Ryan at Guadagni Performance Innovation. I want to take a few minutes to go over some of our testing we uh, did yesterday on the LT1, LT2, ported versions of both, and an out-of-the-box MSD manifold on a 2019 Camaro SS, one of our employees, Zach. Uh, we took his car, and I'll give you a rundown on basically the, uh, the setup of the car and, and our test criteria and, and what our results were. So Zach's car is 2019. Uh, the transmission is not uh, tuned. It's not unlocked on the trans module. So it's ECM tune only on a bone stock car. Uh, it does have a flex sensor, so we were on E70 fuel. Um, for our test, we uh, maintained uh, the same coolant temp, uh, same oil temps. Our coolant, we were running about 183 to 185 at the start of each pull. Air fuel remained constant between all the manifolds with no tune changes. 12.8 to 1 air fuel, 12.7, uh, 12.8. And uh, we ran the same ignition advance on both setups. And our manifold charge temp or our manifold air temp was about 100 to 105 degrees. It's pretty hot here in Arkansas in the middle of the summer right now. And that's about where we were able to keep it at the start of each test. Uh, we couldn't really get it any cooler than that. So uh, to start with, uh, our baseline pulls, what we did, we did uh, basically three to four pulls with each manifold and we took the best results of each one, pretty much. And they were all close. Each pull would be within two to three horsepower and two to three torque. So we took the best from each setup and that's that's what our data is compiled of. Stock, uh, made 441 at 5850 RPMs and 457 torque at 4150. Uh, we thought these were pretty good numbers for a bone stock car on E85. Fairly average, uh, high side of average of what we normally see on our dyno. So uh, we were happy. We had a great starting point. Uh, no hiccups. Uh, stock ported. So we, we ported that factory LT1 manifold. Uh, keep in mind this thing still has the uh, stock air intake on it, uh, stock throttle body. No porting on the throttle body. Uh, so all of these manifolds essentially suffer from a bit of restriction in the upper RPM. Uh, we see that in our MAP KPA. At the start of our pulls at 2500 RPMs, we're 100 KPA, basically no restriction. We're at atmospheric pressure. At 6200, 6300 RPMs at the top of the pull, we're down to 95, 96 KPA. And uh, we've done a fair amount of testing in the past on freeing up that air restriction. Uh, and getting that MAP KPA back up to 98, 99, 100, it usually results in, in some more power, but we didn't want to skew any of the test results. We wanted this to be pretty much true bolt on, uh, no tuning, no change of air induction, just, just straight up. Uh, so, stock we were 441 and 457 torque. Stock ported, we moved up to uh, 447 at uh, the same uh, RPM, about 5,800, 5,850. Uh, torque jumped up uh, to 461 torque at 4,100. So, mild gains, you know, pretty modest gains, which is about what we expected on a bone stock car with no, no other uh, mods. Now, this is where it gets exciting. Uh, this is what a lot of people have been wanting to see, including us. And uh, the LT2 intake manifold just right out of the box, didn't touch it, put it on the car. Uh, we had to shave the bottom in an area to, uh, to clear the high pressure fuel pump, had to extend the MAP sensor wires, make a new uh, crankcase vent hose for the valley cover, and uh, it requires putting a fitting in the back of the manifold for the brake booster hose. This LT2 intake manifold is the truth. Uh, it made 455 right out of the box. Uh, at 5,900 RPM, so it moved peak power up about 100 RPM, something like that. But what's really interesting, well, it made 459 torque at 4,350, so peak torque was shifted a couple hundred RPMs as well. What was really nice to see, though, with the shorter runner of the LT2 intake, peak didn't move up that far, but power past peak did move up a good bit. And out at 6,200 RPMs, uh, we were up 20 rear wheel horsepower versus the stock manifold. Uh, whereas we were up 14 horsepower from peak to peak. So the further it went RPM, the wider the gap got. Um, the manifold works well. Big plenum volume, 
a little bit shorter runner than the factory LT1. Uh, fairly easy bolt on mod and didn't require a single bit of tuning. It was spot on. Um, so we snatched the thing back off. We did some porting on the uh, inlet side of the, uh, the manifold. We did not take the o-ring groove out because we were still running stock throttle body for our testing. Uh, we cleaned up the entry. Uh, we cleaned up some inconsistencies in the runners uh, up to about two and a half, three inches into the runner. And uh, nothing major on the porting. Really just cleaned it up just to see if there was anything that was, you know, any kind of problems or anything with the factory manifold. And there really were. I mean, the, the gains were really small, honestly, with porting. Uh, we picked up three horsepower. We went to uh, 458 uh, at 5950. And we went to 462 torque, so we picked up three foot pounds of torque. It's the same 4350 uh, RPM for peak torque. Um, we didn't really know what to expect, and the gains were pretty small. So, with that that manifold or that that airflow restriction we see at the top of the pool, we saw it with every manifold. Keep in mind, these ported versions of these manifolds, your gains may actually be better when you put either a 95, we set these manifolds up for a 95 millimeter throttle body, or a ported factory and get a either a nice Rotofab or JLT intake on it to, to get some of that restriction, that bottleneck out of there. Some of these portings may, or porting may show you some additional gains. Uh, we'll just have to test that in the future. Um, and for our last test, what we did, we took a, uh, an MSD manifold that's here for porting. Uh, we didn't have time to test a ported MSD, but we took this MSD basically out of the box, assembled it, put it on the car, like I said factory throttle body, everything constant. Uh, it made the same power exactly, well within three tenths of a horsepower, uh, 458 rear wheel at 6200, so it did move peak to, uh, horsepower up, and uh, it made 458 torque, so it made a little less torque than the ported LT2 and it moved peak torque up to 4400. So what we saw was that the even shorter runner of the MSD uh, obviously helped carry that power out, peak a little higher, and it's gonna carry out a little bit better than the LT2 manifold. But I think uh, a huge consideration for us and for, for many people is gonna be that, you know, the LT2 intake is gonna fall somewhere in the, the mid 200s on pricing for an out of the box brand new manifold. Uh, if you, you know the guys that want to do the porting, you know it's probably going to add you know somewhere around a couple hundred dollars, maybe a little more to do porting. And we know the gains aren't huge, but it's worth something. Even despite that, if you have 400, 450, 500 dollars in this manifold by the time it's ported, look at the price tag of an MSD. It's 1,200 dollars, uh, and you can rival the power of the MSD that's out of the box uh, for almost a third of the price. Um, each manifold, you know, has its place probably. The factory LT1 manifold, um, it works really good pound for pound. Hey, it works good when you port it. Sure. Uh, you get some nice gains out of it. And without spending a ton of money, you can, you can get some nice results. The LT2 intake for us was the winner, bang for buck, um, on power gains, torque, power curve torque didn't suffer like it did some with the MSD and uh, yeah obviously the MSD is, is going to carry out in the 6,000 to 7,000 range better than both of those manifolds uh, and then a ported MSD even on top of that is going to get a little bit better so make no mistake the MSD is probably still going to be uh, the horsepower king uh, still of the plastic manifolds but it's not going to be by much and it's going to come at a pretty penny we want to take a few minutes, give you uh, what our results were on the dyno, and uh, we thank you guys.